Hey everybody, what's going on? Pastor Daniel here, and today I wanted to come to you guys and do a short little teaching on the Synoptic Gospels plus the book of John. And today we're going to be tackling this subject by three questions, and those three questions are one, uh, what are the Synoptics? And then two, what makes the accounts different from one another? And then three, why just those four? Uh, the way that we're going to tackle those questions is we're going to look at uh, answers given to us by three approaches the gospel writers give their audience, which is you and I. Starting with the first question, what are the synoptic gospels? Uh, in the order that they were written, Mark, Matthew, and Luke are the synoptics to be specific, but not John. And I'm sure you're asking yourself the same question. I thought the synoptic gospels may just be a more fantastical term of the gospels that I grew up with. But there is a difference between the first three and the book of John. Um, and that comes with our first approach that we're going to dive into, which is their approach in theme. Um, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, they identify and give a portrait of Jesus that he's the Messiah, that he is our Savior, um, that he is the one promised to come. And John, although he offers that same uh, kind of message, it's a little bit broader in the fact that uh, John focuses in on the divinity. The portrait that we're given of Jesus is he's the divine son. So that's the big reason why they, they differ there. Now, historically, um, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, they happen around Galilee in Jesus's early ministry, uh, in and out of Galilee, um, and then later on going to Jerusalem, where as John, on the other hand, uh, we get out of Galilee quick and we go straight to uh, where all the action happens in Jerusalem. Um, and we go in and out of the city. Uh, and this is actually where we see all the different festivals that Jesus uh, got to go with the disciples and everything. And this is where we get our timeline that the the ministry of Jesus happens between two and a half to three and a half years. Um, another way that, that Matthew, Mark, and Luke differ themselves from the book of John is that uh, they present Jesus's teaching style in a very specific way where John doesn't. Um, think about the parables. Think about the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. Those are all uh, happening in the synoptics, whereas John takes a more interpersonal approach where it's more interview driven. The book of John, think of uh, Nicodemus on the roof. Um, uh, think of the woman at the well, for example. Uh, and I want to give you an interesting tidbit that leads us to our second question, that 90% of Mark's material can be found in either Matthew or Luke, whereas only 10% of John's can only be found in the others, which leads us to our second question, what makes the accounts different? If Mark covers pretty much everything, why read the others? <laughs> and the second approach is given to us by the authors, which is their approach in demographic. We have to understand that these gospel accounts were written between somewhere uh, between 65 and 100 CE for very specific reasons and for very specific people groups. Starting with the book of Mark, the earliest uh, of the writings, um, you have to remember in the early church, it was persecuted by Rome. So Mark uh, presents Jesus as just like they were a suffering person, someone who was uh, a, who suffered on the cross uh, for our sin. He became the sacrifice for our sin. And just like they were, he suffered. Uh, Matthew came next, and that was written for the Jewish Christians, which is the perennial book that, you know, offers Jesus up as the Messiah, the fulfillment of Old Testament hopes and promises from the prophets. Luke comes out next, and Luke is for the Jewish non-Christian. And this answers um, a concern that, that uh, essentially the Savior is for all people groups. It's very important for the Jews to understand that. And then John coming out last was written primarily for a Gentile audience. In other words, you and I, uh, but specifically for Roman and Grecian citizens. And this, uh, again, uh, dictates that Jesus and communicates that Jesus is the divine son who reveals the nature of the father uh, by, his, by his nature. Um, which leads us to our last question, which is why these accounts? Um, isn't there other material out there, Pastor Daniel? Of course there's other material out there. But this last question is uh, answered by the last approach, which is their approach in theology. That's huge. That's one of the biggest things. Um, the four gospel accounts actually all are written, we believe, before 
uh, the end of the first century. All the other writings that you may have seen about online or on Google or on Facebook, whatever you've seen, a lot of those accounts come out after the first century. So there's a certain level of confidence in, in knowing that um, these four gospel accounts were either written by the apostles uh, or written by the first generation disciples from the disciples. Uh, and they happened within the generation of Jesus's death, which is super comforting, um, which is uh, probably the biggest uh, answer to these three questions, because um, how do we know how do we know that what we're reading is what we're supposed to be reading or the thing to read? And there is a there is a narrative thread that although they do differ, they all give us a certain level of comfort in knowing that the there is a synergy between the gospel accounts and they all paint a beautiful picture of, of who Jesus is to us and who he is for every generation that has come before and is coming next. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Catch you guys next time.